God. Paint it black. Yeah, I, just screwing around with this thing. It, it, um, oh, I'm sorry. Welcome to Guitar Talk. My <laughs> name is Matt Cogswell. To my left is uh, Stan Biankowitz, the owner of these gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful, I'd like to marry Gibsons, okay? <laughs> I mean, I, Stan, what is this beautiful thing I'm holding right well, here? Well, uh, first of all, let, Matt, why don't you tell, tell the story about the guitar collector that, um, that, that was killed by his wife? Uh, <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember yeah, the story? Yeah, yeah. She told me. Um, the judge said. Um, well, well. Here's how it went. It, uh, a woman killed her husband for collecting guitars, and when she went to trial, the judge goes, first offender." She goes, "No, first a Gibson, then offender." Yeah. First, I hit him with the Gibson. <laughs> then I. Hit him with the <laughs> this, these guitars, to me are the eptamen of, I mean, it doesn't get any prettier. Uh, and not only that, form follows function on these. They, they just have a, a, you know, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Girth. Right? <laughs> they have a, a, a substance to them. And the sounds that come out of them, uh, you know, of course, it depends on your level of expertise with sound. But the sounds that come out of them are just absolutely gorgeous. And they're great looking guitars, Stan. Yeah. I mean, what am I holding here? Well, that's an L5S, and the only reason I brought that was to, uh, to show um, a few things, because uh, we're going to be talking today about uh, uh, the famous Polish guitar player, Les Paul, and, and how uh, the next production model uh, from the previous show, we talked about the first major production model called the Telecaster from, the, from a company called Fender. And then Les Paul uh, had gone to Gibson and had said, you know, I have an idea for a solid guitar, unbeknownst, because this was around the same time Leo Fender was basically designing his guitar. This was, no one knew this was coming. Gibson didn't realize that Fender was, you know, it was a small company out in the middle of nowhere. and. They went and kicked Les Paul out saying, take this broomstick and get it the heck out of our sight. But then once Fender sales, after a couple of years, were showing such a profit margin, Gibson all of a sudden decided to call Les Paul back. And uh, that became the beginning of the Les Paul solid body Gibson era okay, so of what sales. Is, what is this? That's what actually what Les Paul wanted. Would you flip it around to the other side, Matt? Yeah, I'm going to show, show, show you off so you don't make any noise. I okay? want to show a couple of different uh, views of this while Stan's describing it, okay? Um, you just can't get the total, the beauty of this thing. If you get a close-up on it, that, that'd I mean, be, you know. It, there's almost like a tiger pattern. Well, that's, that's all flame that maple? maple. That's all maple. Flame maple. It's just absolutely flip gorgeous. It, flip it to the back side. It's very substantial, too. And you'll see... I mean, there's piping on it, and look at, at, at a side view. Look at the way that it actually, from the fat, it comes down, and it's just it's Basically so a elegant. football shape. A, if you, and uh, look at the headstock. Look at the headstock on this thing. If you, uh, and the keys. To, let, let, hang on, let him, let him show the headstock. There we go. And the keys. Look at the, oh, these those keys are, are gorgeous. Well, those are Grover Imperials. Those were changed. Uh, they didn't originally come with the guitar. Uh, if you show the butt end of the guitar, you'll show it'll show how much of a football shape it ends up being. See how thin it is, and then it gets thicker in the middle. If you lift I mean, it just a little higher, as thin as it is, and uh, of course widening in the middle, it's very. You know you're holding the guitar when you got this thing, and it's just beautiful. It's a, it's a beautiful guitar. Now, Matt, I'd like you to do me a favor. I'm sorry and if I'm over enthusiastic. I just <laughs> I love these things. Since we started with the wood, let's let's. Um, sw I'm going to have you swap guitars first. Okay. So you can just lay that one's all set. You can yeah. You can unplug it if you want to. It, it, you're, you're off. It doesn't make a difference. Okay. I wanted to whatever I pick up. In fact, I can hand it to you if you'd like. No, no. You can put it back in its case. Okay. If you can make it back there. All right. To be very careful with these babies. Lay it down gently. There you go. Gently. Now pick up the other one. And um, I'd like you to show the back of the other one. See, this one's a wee bit heavier. As you can see, it's a little thicker than the one we just showed you. And what's the year on this one? That's, a, that's relatively new. That's like a 2009, maybe 2010. Okay. Now, like uh, a, if what you is get this? a close-up of the back. What would you call this? Cherry? Oh, that's a cherry color. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Dye it, they dye it cherry. But what you're looking at over here is mahogany. Now, when Les Paul wanted this guitar to be made for him, he wanted it to be all maple. 
Uh, so Les Paul didn't really get to design the guitar. What he, what he did is he brought in the idea, and then the Gibson people, at first, well, they made mistakes. Remember the profound answer in humanity is not the pencil, it's the eraser at the other end. So Gibson came up with the wrong neck angle, and they thought maple would be too heavy if it was completely maple, but the reason they were going, Les Paul wanted the maple and wanted it to be all maple is for clarity, for, uh, for, for the ability for the ear to hear the enunciation of the notes because guitars that aren't clear when the player's playing them, if somebody can play them like this, so everything's mumbling. So they want the clarity. And, and what clarity is, when people say, I'm looking for a bright guitar, they're, they're talking about enunciation. How the, how the word is pronounced. Remember, um, as a person, as you get older, you're gonna lose high end. Just like you know, you, you lose your vision, your hearing starts to go. Uh, even the, the most healthiest of the healthiest, the people who have the least amount of hearing loss still have hearing loss due to age. And what is that loss? It's high end. So when there's too much high end, you lose definition. That's why people have a hard time that are getting older, have a hard time hearing in crowds because there's a lot of treble response and it's biting into the pronunciation of the words. So it's, it, it becomes like a bunch of gibberish to your ear, uh, yet a lack of high end. So when you, you're talking and you're talking normally to someone just by themselves where there isn't all this high end, creating this gibberish. Now you're lacking it and everything starts to mumble. All right. So, uh, so it has something to do with clarity then. A little high end helps clarity. It helps the clarity and, and maple is the clearest of the clear. Uh, whereas right, mahogany, now what, is, what is this? That has a maple top to it. And what, what year is this? That's like 2009, 2010. 2009, 2010. It's just, it's very, um, it, 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 it's, spare, has beautiful lines. You see the headstock as opposed to the one I showed you at first. That one was big and gaudy. This one is a little more streamlined, a little shorter, and it, it's it, everything is clean. It's well, very that's, clean that's because there. this was the Les Paul model. Now, if you, if you notice, people will call this the Les Paul standard, and that's a long Les Paul story that I don't really want to get into unless we're really in need of filling up some time space. Uh, originally, this model was called the Les Paul model. Originally, this model came not with those squarish pickups. You can stop the camera right there, Jeff. That'd be fantastic. You can see that's a humbucker. There are two single coils. One happens to be black. The other one happens to be cream. Uh, the reason that exists is another long story that's really not pertinent as much to the history of the instrument. It's all mostly cosmetics. You know something else I've noticed about humbuckers on, on Les Pauls? What's on that? Gibsons in general is this one is almost perpendicular, parallel to the strings. This one has a little bit of upstroke going towards the end of the guitar. It's almost like this. Oh, that's because of the, of the, 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 the ring. If you notice, the ring has a slant in it. Yes. Yeah, and that, and that guides a uh, flat piece. The, the other flat piece will interact right. flat to the... It's almost closer to the strings down the bottom near the, uh, near the bridge. Well, the, the reason you do that, and, and all electrics have the same thing with this one, you'll notice that the pickup is closer. You can see it, yeah. There's a little upswing there on the pickup. Well, Acoustically, that's versus that. If right. you notice, that's bright, that's warm. That's why this pickup sounds different than that pickup in all cases. So in that guitar, that guitar, all of them. The neck pickup has the most uh, uh, frequencies. This is a very weak area because it's all treble response. But mm. that's why they use the bridge pickup for for soloing is because that's where they need that that treble where they need that brightness to be but the weakness now the pickup has to be drawn closer to the strings to compensate for the amount of weakness that's in that area volume wise where the volume in this area is much much stronger so the neck pickup will always overpower the bridge pickup on volume because of where the string lies in the laws of physics right so your neck you would use uh, uh, more for rhythm more for rhythm because of the warmth and everything right. else. And the bridge, 
you, you would compensate the volume by bringing the pickup closer and you'd also go for the treble response. But what I want to show you here is the Les Paul Custom. So there were four Les Pauls made. I only have representation of two today. Um, there was the Les Paul, uh, the original model was the Les Paul model, which uh, Matt is holding right now. But the difference would be, it looked more like this guitar. It was painted all gold. The entire instrument was gold painted. Top. It, not just the bat, not just the top. Originally, it was painted all gold. You had no they, they idea. Call it, they call it a gold top. It was. It was. Well, th they eventually called it a gold top because they stopped spraying the back gold. They okay. only started spraying the top gold. Uh, the original idea uh, why they they sprayed it all gold on the original Les Paul was. Are you ready for this? You know how? Uh, what was what's the famous uh, rich guy Howard Howard Hughes? The recluse? The recluse, the yeah. Howard Hughes? Well, Howard Hughes was known to take an idea from someone else and find out what made it tick. So Howard Hughes would slice things in half, and it was well known in the 40s and 50s that this guy would, this is how he would, he would find a way to go around your patent and repatent the instrument, you know, with, uh, with an Japanese, improvement. And, yeah, the Japanese yeah. were masters of it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, Gibson originally painted this instrument all gold so no one would know what woods were used and they would have to cut the instrument in half or sand off the finish to find out what's going on. So the original Les Paul came all gold. It came with these, what, if this was uh, uh, in a cream color, it would look more like a soap bar. If we can get a close-up on one of these pickups, it's, I know it's tough because they're all black. Uh, but uh, what's going on is uh, this is considered a soap bar. Now, there's two P90s. One is called a soap bar, and the other, and the reason they call it a soap bar is because it, it, it actually looks like a bar of soap. If you look at the two of these, they look like an elongated bar of soap. On the, on the regular model, this cover would be in the cream color, as you would see it on the one that Matt's holding. Uh, it would be a cream cover, and, and that, that would make it really look like a soap bar. Uh, because, yeah, you I know, could see uh, that. So now, it was gold, it had soap bars, it had a maple top, it had mahogany back. Why? Gibson said all maple would be too heavy, so they looked for a wood that was bright, but it had a more of a flat response with, the, with a reasonable, a warm bass response going on to a good treble response, and that would be mahogany. So they made the back of the regular, regular model mahogany, painted it all gold, and the first time they made it, they didn't get the neck angle right. The neck angle is, as you can see, the, the body goes off to, as a diagonal. That's neck angle. You see that? Yes. Well, if I eliminate it, you'll notice this part's going to end up going down. So Les Paul designed this really cool tailpiece, but because Gibson got the neck angle wrong, they had to string it upside down, which was frustrating to the, to the players. They were like, why, why am I buying a guitar that I have to work harder to play? Um, and Les was all disgusted with them because of it, because he designed this, it was a huge tailpiece. So what they did was, they created what they call the stop bar tailpiece, and that's what this is down here. That was the Les Paul's creation. Well, no, it was a, a combination of Les Paul's creation not needing the trapeze part because there was a big trapeze like you would right. see on that guitar. Yep. That, that's another reason why I brought the L5S yep. is because of the trapeze versus the stop bar. Now, by putting the stop bar in, and then stringing it over like the other Les Paul is, is this one's strung, uh, this one's strung under, uh, but there's, there's what they call overstringing, which the other one is strung that way. That's, so that's it's to one. increase string angle, and the more you increase the string angle, if we can get a close-up on Matt's uh, tailpiece there, if you point your finger there, Matt, at it. Uh, actually, you can see that. Better show. Go the other direction, Matt. There you go. Perfect. You can see the strings actually go over the top of the tailpiece. And by creating string angle here, okay, there's less pressure here. All the, all the sustain and volume is back here. Whereas I have this one straight strung, 
Yeah, your angle is different. Yeah, so my string angle is different, you can and now see it. I'm getting I'm getting more stiffness for the same amount of angle, and all my sustain is coming more from here than from here. All right, but at any rate, he had made this huge tailpiece. Uh, they started off with a stop bar, and then in 1954 they came up with this edition. This is called the Les Paul Custom. Mine here is a 1955 and you'll notice that it has the soap bar pickups. That's because the humbucker pickup wasn't developed till uh, eh, more towards mid late 57 kind of a thing. Um, there's a few um, gold tops that actually have a tunematic and the humbucker pickups uh, because they were looking for a new color least, for the guitar. All these together Stan. Hold them together. And look at, you can see minor differences in them. This, the older one is more substantial in the body, okay? You can see the headstock difference, the pearl inlay, and there's just a wee bit of difference on the way that the, uh, the pearl inlay on the bridges are, a little bit of that. I love the bridges on a Les Paul. That's one of the things that I really, really like about them. I mean, not the bridges, the, um, the, the neck. inlay, the neck, the inlay. Yeah, I love the neck. I um, this is an older neck. This is more of a modern neck here. Yeah, careful with that one. That's the most expensive one here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a gorgeous guitar, really. You, you know, I wish you were here to hold this. Okay? <laughs> so when they made the Les Paul Custom, they added all this beautiful extra inlay that this one doesn't have. This is all made out of plastic, where mats holding the Les Paul Custom now, that's all abalone, and that's, excuse me, that's all mother of pearl. Mother of pearl, especially up in the headstock. Really, really pretty. It's Hold really, the guitar really still nice. for a sec, Matt. And we'll get up into the headstock. And then lean that forward just a little bit to get in the light. There you go. So that's all mother of pearl. And the tuning that's keys all, are elegant. They, they're like a pyramid shape, and they're gold, well, brass. I mean. Everything about this thing just screams uh, class. I, I mean, it, well, it's Les a Paul didn't guitar. think so. Les Paul I think said, so. I "Les think Paul so. said you you made the you used the wrong woods. You called the wrong one the wrong one." Uh, remember, there was a, there was a Junior and there was a Special, which were more student model Les Pauls. These were the the, the class here of the bunch. Uh, but they used all mahogany on the Les Paul Custom. They didn't use the maple cap, which disgusted Les Paul because he wanted the clarity of the maple. They go, he goes, you used the wrong, you should have used, made the standard so all you're, mahogany. So you're saying that that is clearer than this? Even, even when you, okay, I can hear it. Yeah. You can hear the brightness, yep. the, extra, the extra clarity. This is like almost muffled next to that. Yeah, well, it needs a, neck, it needs a truss rod adjustment too. That's not helping it, but... Uh, yeah, it, it, this this one has more clarity than that one does. So this could be something that maybe you could help by you know tuning. I mean, not tuning it, but uh, a certain way with the pickup controls. Or I, I believe that every guitar is a singer, and if you don't like the singer's voice, putting pickups in it or trying to re-manipulate it just really doesn't really do anything for it. But it's, it'll help something good, but it won't save something that that yes, that's bad. Okay. Yes. So now, if you had a, a great vocalist and you tried a bunch of different microphones and trust me they they usually do this sinatra had his own favorite that he used to come into the studio with that was the mic he would be recorded with because the singer believed that that microphone sounded most natural to them as far as themselves singing through it so when you buy an instrument when you buy a guitar it's what makes you what makes your fingers sound good to you because to be honest with you as far as the general public is concerned they don't know what you're doing they don't know that you're using these effects all they know is you're presenting something to them in a format that they enjoy listening to and if they don't enjoy listening to it you do, I don't care how good you think you are or how good by yourself from the project you may be it's, it's the presentation so Guitar playing, whether you're playing in your house to yourself, you're only as good as your last gig. So if you sang and played really well that, that last time, that's great. But when you go in front of an audience, do they share that opinion? So the only good sounding guitarist, the only good sounding vocalist to the general audience is, is the one who is actually 
it's the, not the guitar, it's not the microphone, it's the person. So you can buy a $2,000 baseball glove, you're still not going to work for the Red Sox, yeah. right? So now you're looking to find an instrument that, that you, your ear, enjoys its equalization points. It's a representation of you. And is this instrument doing that for you? Of course, most people don't think of it always this way. I mean, that perspective, every, it's like opinions. Every rear end's got one. In my opinion, the, the one, the instrument, the instrument that, that you always see the popular, successful business guitarist, a la, let's say, Eric Clapton or... or Who's that young gentleman? He plays for Jane's Addiction. He's a GNL endorser. It's another guitar company. Um, he's always playing the same. You know, they give him new ones, but every once in a while you see him pull out his old one. Uh, John Schofield. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't think of this guy's name. But anyway, John Schofield, the famous jazz uh, uh, guitar player, started his career on a uh, Gibson ES335 copy. Uh, that was made by Ibanez to the point where there's a signature model made for him and, and trust me, if you blow the four grand that Ibanez charges for a signature model. Jimmy but, Vaughan, Jimmy Vaughan has a, uh, it's not, is it an Ibanez? No, it's a Strat. It's a Fender. But it's there a Fender is also product. a Jimmy Vaughan uh, uh, signature one. From uh, Fender, yes. Is it from Fender? Yeah. I thought yeah. it was an Ibanez. Yeah. yeah, that's from Fender. I like the neck on that. But like the neck on that one. it's a copy of Jimmy's actual guitar. Yeah. Does Jimmy play this Mexican-made Strat? No, he probably plays his main guitar. Eric Clapton sold his guitar. They made 25 copies of it, and he bought it back at a loss. This is how much the instrument starts becoming part of the player. That's why you don't see him flipping them around. Well, they, 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 they get one, and that's they, they made their trade. There's tra an they exception made their to every rule. Joe Bonamassa is just buying and buying and buying yeah, and buying. Yeah, but Joe Bonamassa is not a, a signature guitar player. He's he's the rich little of guitar players. Uh, he plays I, I everything. Hear, I, I never hear him. <laughs> I hear everybody else but him because he doesn't have a him. He's got no style to himself. He's, he steals everybody else's to the T. Doesn't even bother to re-manipulate it to make it more Joe Bonamassa. Another one, another one I have... I have Stan, no, Stan no has a better ear than I do because I do not see that. I, I have see. no consideration for a guy named John Mayer. I mean, I've heard just as good a guitar player. I hear nothing profound from this man. I don't even, if, if, if Joe Bonamassa and John Mayer uh, independently started a song on the radio and they were just in line with a bunch of other guitar players like Eric Clapton, um, this guy from Jane's Addiction, uh, people that actually... When they start playing, you know who's starting to, what, who wrote the song, who's going to be in the song. You know who's playing. You know who's playing. Well, there's a thing that, there's two guys I think of right off the top of my head is Santana and B.B. Uh, King. It, when you hear them, you know it's them. Now, there's a, there's a there's, no, Santana used to do more SGs, but at any rate, um, there's a gentleman online that took Europa, a famous uh, uh, instrumental Santana tune. Gary that, Moore. That, that he, Gary, Gary Moore did one. Well, no, no, no. This is all Santana. They they edited like fourteen or fifteen performances of this song into one song, and every time it went through eight bars, it went to another venue, another place. And you know what? Every time you listen to that change. Everything sounded different. The equalization points, Santana's guitars did not sound the same. But when you closed your eyes, you still knew it was Carlos Santana playing. So I highly recommend people who watch the show to listen to, to that and realize that there's more in the player's hands than you believe. There's more trademark in the player's hands than you believe. And when I hear people who just mechanically do it, there's no signature to their voice. There's nothing, like, when, I, uh, this isn't about vocals, although I am a singer. Uh, when you hear me sing, you, you know it's me. Yeah, you know, I can see that, thing. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, Shut and that up. When, when you hear me play, people go, you're better than you think you are, because I'll know it's you playing in the next room 
When there's three guitars playing, I know which one's you. Thank you, wife, because she's heard me for so many years. Yeah. But you always, that's why, like, if you go and let's get, get together with five guitar playing friends, everybody brings their gear, everybody brings their own gear, and then everybody swaps instruments. And you know what? No one's going to sound like somebody else on their instruments. It's happened more than once. And even if you think you might be able to disprove it, I'll give you the infamous, uh, what's his name, Cat Scratch Fever. What's that guy's name? Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent was uh, either opening for Van Halen or Van Halen was opening for Ted Nugent. And Ted thought, he goes, oh, Eddie, can I play your guitar? It's, you know, I want to I sound like Eddie Van Halen. And, he, and, he, and disappointingly to Ted, he plugged in Eddie's rig and he said, oh, no, I still sounded like Ted Nugent. It's in the hands. It's everything's in the hands. And if you don't strive to be your own voice, you're going to end up like Joe Bonamassa. Yeah, he's making money, but it's like, Insurance to me, you know, eh, you know, they're making money for All right, nothing. One man's opinion. Let's get back right. to Gibson. All yeah, right, back right. to back to the Gibson Les Paul. So it eventually went into the humbucker mode, and I was going to show you a few other things as far as some of the manipulations that I've done on this. But let's just stay historic. Uh, and eventually, another model came out, the Deluxe, and that's pretty much it. That's the Les Paul. That's the Les Paul in a nutshell. The, the infamous Polish guitar See, player. See, every every show that we've done in the last month. It seems like you're nipping us off right when we're really, really ready to get into it. We're going to do like an, I think we'd, I'd like to do an hour special. And, uh, you know, your thoughts, your opinions are welcome. Okay. What was the, uh, uh, not, you can get, get us through not for nothing. Yeah, not for nothing at, at, hot, G at Gmail. Gmail at, yeah. And not G for nothing at gmail.com. Gmail in subject line, right, guitar talk. If there's something you'd like us to do for an hour, we want to do something for an hour because these half hours are starting to get constricting because there's so much information. Well, that's his opinion. So, well, <laughs> there, there's such interest. Believe it or not, uh, this is just, this is like not even, hasn't getting deep at all. We, we weren't even plugged in for two seconds today. There's so much more I want to know, and I hope you, you share my curiosity. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching this version of uh, Guitar Talk, and thank you for being here, Stan, and thank you for these Welcome. wonderful guitars, and we hope to see you soon, and we're going to get deeper into it. Thank you. Good night, and good luck. <laughs> Bye.